on the rap up. It's the morning wrap up. Ba, 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 ba. Happy Saturday, everyone, and a gorgeous Saturday it is. Yesterday was like the perfect day. Like the most perfect day on earth was yesterday here in New Jersey of all places. Go figure. Uh, after a brutal summer of uh, what can only be described as the, the face of the sun, we've really lucked out um, the last week. And, you know, um, really the, the, this uh, August has been what's usually a brutal month has been uh, really pleasant. And you know what else is pleasant? When a buddy of yours drops off a book to you that he knows, sees it in a bookstore, and goes, I know Matt Lacasio, I know Kamish is going to love this book. I know that he's going to brush his hair, which I swear to God I did this morning. I don't know why it's looking like that. And he's going to read this book, and he's right. Walt Clyde Frazier, uh, this was after the Knicks won the championship. This is after the Knicks, the last time the Knicks won the championship. For perspective, if you're ever going to bitch about your team, just remember first that Kamish is a Knicks fan. There's a picture from the last time the Knicks won, Knicks won a championship. In case you're wondering how long ago that fucking was. All right. Um, I had two epiphanies yesterday besides asking myself why I'm a Knicks fan. Um, the first one is, you know, I proudly, I, I know I talk trash on Jersey, but I'm also a proud New Jersey, right? Like, I, I'm one of those people while I'm here. I talk shit on it, but when I'm anywhere else, I talk about New Jersey like it's the fucking, you know, like it's the south of France. Like it's just the greatest place on earth. There's nowhere else you would rather be than New Jersey. We're the best at everything, right? I proudly rep Jersey. But you know who hasn't been doing that? And I've let him off the hook a long time, long time. I had a poster on my wall when I was a kid. Now, granted, I thought at least two of the members were female. Uh, I had their first album. I was the first kid in kindergarten class with their first album, Slippery When Wet. And if you don't know who I'm talking about yet, I'm talking about John Goddamn Bon Jovi. All right? Everywhere I go, every karaoke bar, every country bar in Nashville, I make them play John Bon Jovi to let everyone know I'm from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. You're going to hear some Bon Jovi, you're going to hear some Whitney, you're going to hear some uh, Springsteen, okay? But I think I'm going to stop asking them to play, to, to, to play uh, you know, some JBJ. I, I think I'm going to stop repping Bon Jovi, I really am. You know why? That motherfucker acts like he's from Philly. Now, I know they're from the shore, right? They're from the southern part of Jersey, but so is Bruce Springsteen. You don't see him acting like this. You don't see him acting like he calls it pork roll. You don't see him eating sandwiches with white American cheese. And you damn sure don't see him in Eagles jerseys and, and, and repping, um, you know, all things Philadelphia, buying Philadelphia franchises. And the worst part of all, helping, um, you know, the helping disadvantaged youths in Philadelphia. What are you doing? What are you doing, John Bon Jovi? That's right. He has a charity set up specifically to help children in need in Philadelphia. Fuck you. Fuck you, Bon Jovi. We don't have kids here in Jersey that need help. Okay? Now I want to get into a whole foreign aid policy thing here. I don't want it extrapolating out. I'm just specifically talking about New Jersey. You rep Jersey. That's how you became famous. People said these kids are from Jersey. Let's give it a listen. I didn't know a, a band could make it out of New Jersey. I didn't know kids could make it out of New Jersey intact. Let's give them a listen. Sure, they're loud. Sure, they're commercial. Sure, their acid wash jeans are stronger than their vocal cords. But they're from Jersey. Let's give them a chance. And that's how Bon Jovi get made it big. And yet he's taking all his money and investing it into Philadelphia, which last time I checked was in the goddamn state of Pennsylvania. That's right. The Keystone State or whatever they call it. State of confusion. State of never-ending construction fields that smell like cow manure. He's a turncoat. He's a Benedict Arnold.
living on a prayer. He's been living on, you know, his uh, royalties from the 80s way too long. I'm sorry. He's got a whole song about, you know, you can't go. Who says you can't go home? You can't go home, motherfucker. Keep your ass in Pennsylvania. Keep your ass in Philadelphia. You want to have all your charities based there? You want to have your teams based there? You want to wear Eagles gear? You want to call it pork roll? You want to get white American cheese, which is communism? Keep your ass in Philadelphia. Don't let him leave. Don't let him over the goddamn border. He made his money from being in New Jer from New Jersey. He made his, you know, his, his killing in New Jersey. He should be paying Jersey taxes. And those taxes are you have to rep Jersey wherever you go. And all your money has to somehow circulate back to New Jersey, even if it's just for money laundering purposes. You can send it right back out, but it's got to come back home like your song. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew's a Jersey kid. He needs help. Little Matt's of the world need help. You think I'm making money off this? You think I'm making money off SDS? I had to steal this coffee. I had to run out of Walmart like I'm Ezekiel Elliott out of breath. And then I popped my knee in, a, uh, in one of their potholes. But it was worth it. It's good coffee. <laughs> um, I'm joking. I didn't steal the coffee. I had uh, I had another epiphany. Um, if you're sticking around after that. After that nonsensical tirade. Um, and by the way, all the hairspray, I, you know, I used back in kindergarten to rep you, John. All the shitty attire I put on to look like I was possibly like the sixth member of Bon Jovi. And this is how you're going to do. Anyway, anyway, I digress. I don't want to get too angry about that. Um, Bobby bought this up while he was over there. We were talking about brisket. And I didn't realize, you know. He was making a brisket, and I told him how good the brisket is down south by my parents. I didn't realize like you got to kill a whole cow to make a to make a brisket. <laughs> and I, I didn't realize that like per brisket is per cow. So a lot of these places that sell out brisket, it's not that they can't get more brisket; it's that they don't want to kill like a thousand cows in one day. Because if you sell five hundred briskets, you're killing five hundred cows essentially. So, um, you know, they, for humane reasons, a lot of these big, uh, barbecue places will only sell X amount of brisket, which I think is nice. Um, and it got us into the discussion of like, you know, why it's okay to eat cow and kill 500 cow and God knows how many chickens lose their life. Every year, uh, thanks to, you know, NFL Sundays. You ever think about that when you're in, like, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings or maybe a classier establishment if you have a credit score, you know, on a Sunday and you're eating chicken wings? You ever look around and be like, how many fucking chickens had to die for these wings? But both the cow and the chicken are bred to, you know, they're literally being bred to be used as a food source. So I don't know how I feel about that. Mixed feelings. I know I used to live next to an auction growing up. Um, there was like an auction a block away uh, from where I lived in Hackettstown. And I used to walk by and the cows would moo all sad. And they'd be like, moo. And I'd be like, fuck, man. And I'd even go pet them. And they'd be like, moo. Get me the fuck out of here. And I'd feel awful. I'd feel awful about that. I'd pet the cow and I'd say, man, I'm... I'm not eating man. I might be a vegan or something. And then as I was saying that, I'd somehow be eating a cheeseburger at the same time. Miraculously, a cheeseburger would appear in both hands like that stupid comic back in the day. And I'd just be chowing down on both of them. Double fisting. Please don't make a meme out of this. I'm sorry, cow. You're fucking delicious. I can't. No one told me. You know, no one told you to be so goddamn delicious. So that brings me to that whole billboard sign that's like, where does it end? And it's got a, a cross, right? It's like chickens, cows, something else. And then there's like a fucking dog, a dolphin, you know, animals they think we wouldn't dare eat a horse. And really, the only reason I wouldn't eat those animals is because I don't think they taste good. 
Like, you ever smell a wet dog? That meat's probably gamey as fuck. I can't imagine a dog is, is a delicious animal. It's too muscular. Now, I wouldn't eat a dog that I had as a pet, but I would eat your dog if I didn't know it, if it was a delicious animal. I'd eat Rover. I'd eat Barkley. I'd eat, I'd eat you know, Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> you know, whatever stupid name you're, you're going to name your dog. Uh, Aaron, Aaron's dog's name is Cake Pop. Which is a delightful name. And an adorable dog. But Aaron, if Cake Pop tasted delicious, you should not leave me in a room with Cake Pop. That, right? That's why I wore it, Andrew. There you got it. It's Satrielli's pork store. Um, if I knew dog tasted like pig, look, I'm friends with a pig on Instagram. He's awesome. I go to bars he's at to hang out sometimes. His name's Harvey, not Ham. But you know what, Harvey? I'm still going to eat some goddamn ham. Because it's delicious. Cats, TJ, according to my English grandmother, every time I ate Asian food growing up, I was eating cat. I know it's racist as fuck, but that's what people used to think. You know what? If cat really tastes like General Sh uh, Joe's t chicken, serve up Mr. Whiskers. Serve up nibbles. Mr. Mittens, you're on my plate today. I'm sorry. I'd eat human. I don't want anyone to think I'm discriminating here. Look, if I found out that human meat tasted like prime rib, I wouldn't be eating at Carl's Burgers. I'd be eating Carl. Thank you, TJ. That was great. <laughs> and don't take the I'd be eating Carl and turn that into a gift, Okay. But I'm serious, look, you know, Carl's burger, Burgers, I'll just have fucking Carl, man. Broil that bitch up. If I have no personal relationship with Carl, just like a dog, put him on my plate next to some coleslaw and some macaroni and cheese. And if you have tater tots, I'd love some. That's my point. Hate me if you want. It's the way my mind works. I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm not going to apologize for being who I am. Okay. Did Jeffrey Dahmer apologize? I don't know because honestly, towards the end of that series on Netflix, I was so grossed out that I was taking Delta 8 pills just to get through it. But either way, you know, be true to who you are. You hear me, John Bon Jovi? Be true to who you are. Take off the Eagles jersey. Put some money in some kid's pocket in, you know, in Trenton. Or Camden, or or Bud Lake, or Hackettstown, or Newark, or wherever the fuck you know you find poor kids around here. Roxbury, somewhere. Stop putting it into the state of Pennsylvania. They don't need it. They shouldn't even be a state. This is SDS.